As stated, simple harmonic motion, it talks about any kind of oscillating system, a system that goes back and forth and back and forth. A spring is a classic example, literally a classic example. Um, it's not the only one though. Uh, this is moving up and down. Another up and down oscillating system might be, say, the tides as they come in and out and they move boats up and down. Uh, you don't just have to have up down oscillating systems. You could have left right oscillating systems like say a pendulum would be a good example. It goes back and forth and back and forth. Now when you have a look at the motion of it and particularly as you watch that purple thing moving up and down and up and down, what kind of function jumps out at you to represent this motion as according to what's being tracked there. What do you see? That looks like a sine wave to me, right? In fact, I'll go one better than a sine wave. Sine is short for sinusoidal, which is a big category of waves. Um, the cosine wave is also sinusoidal. It has the same shape, it just starts and ends at a different spot. So the sinusoidal wave or a sinusoidal function describes everything that works in an oscillating way. But you can't just say, oh, it kind of looks like that, right? Um, for example, a trained expert would have done this beforehand, but I didn't bring, I'm just gonna break this a little bit. Hold on. Ugh. For example, you can look at some things in the real world that you might think look like something, but they're actually not. So for instance, if you take a string or a chain or anything that you can suspend underneath, I've really tangled myself here, well done Mr. Wu, uh, anything that you can suspend under its own weight. So here's a cable here, right? Now superficially, just forget about the wiggles for a moment because it's all tangled, right? Superficially, doesn't that look kind of like a parabola? Kind of looks parabola-esque, right? Um, except that it's not. It's not a parabola, it's a different kind of shape called a catenary. So you can't just like trust your eyes and say, oh, it looks like a parabola, let's just make it a parabola. I know it looks like a sine wave. It's a very good guess. But can we do better than just guessing? Take with me this idea of modeling with a particular mathematical function. So I'm just going to go with, say for example, x for displacement. And let's just choose some particular sine wave with some unknown frequency. So remember, the part of this that is affected by frequency um, is going to be within the brackets here, right? It's going to be the coefficient of whatever our variable is. Normally we're used to having like a y and an x in here, but I'm calling x my displacement, and this is relative to time, I guess. So I'm going to pop a t in there for time, and my n is changing whatever my frequency is. Now this particular graph here, you can see it starts at the origin, that's just for the convenience of the animation, but it doesn't have to. We could change the phase of it to anywhere we like. Right? We can just move it left to right, have it begin at some arbitrary point. Now what I want to show you is why, from again, a mathematical standpoint, not like looking at the data, why this actually is going to work perfectly for us. Um, and actually the reason that's going to um, make sense of this is actually something I'm wearing, weirdly enough. The tool that we use to understand motion and change is differentiation, right? I can integrate to get out of this, but I can differentiate to go from displacement to, what's the next thing? Velocity. Velocity. Now I could call that V, but for reasons of convention, I'm gonna go with one of the other ways of representing uh, velocity, which is X with a dot above it, which is differentiating with respect to time, okay? You can tell me what the derivative is, sine of NT plus alpha, where are you gonna get? Simple chain rule, right? Do the inside? N, and then I differentiate the outside, it's sine, so it turns into cos. And then everything else comes along for the ride. So far, so good. So this is a velocity equation that I have here. I'm going to go one more, and then this will show me why this is so perfect for simple harmonic motion. When I go to the next derivative, down to acceleration, humor me, what am I going to get on the next line? Minus n squared. Okay, so you're doing a couple of things at the same time, right? So you've Helpfully, <coughs> excuse me, pop the minus sign out the front, anticipating this cos is going to differentiate into negative sine. At the same time, you've recognized that m was already there, but it will get another m because of the inside derivative, right? So that gives you an m squared, and then everything else comes along for the ride. Yes? 
Now the reason why this is important is if you have a look just right here, this is the displacement function we began with, is it not? So therefore what I can do is I can say of this acceleration equation, I can go from just happy old derivatives, these are derivatives here, to something which relates the original function with its derivative. Do you, we have a name from this. Do you remember what this is called from extension one? This is called a differential equation. It's an equation that relates an original function with one of its derivatives. In this case, it's second order because we differentiate twice. Okay? Now, look at this carefully. Right? This is the magical part that tells us why this is perfect for simple harmonic motion. Right? I said I was wearing my illustration. One of the best models for simple harmonic motion is a rubber band. Okay, because if you can imagine, let's use my um, let's use my left hand as the uh, center of motion. Okay, if you can imagine trying to move with my right hand, this is like a particle or something like that, further away. Right? Don't worry, I'm not going to break it. I have self-interest, so I'm not going to do this just to hurt myself. Okay? As I move further away, you can even see it, can't you? Right? Um, because I'm, I have so little upper body strength. Right? I I can't move past a certain limit because what's the rubber band doing to me? It's resisting me, going further. Another way of saying it's resisting me from going further is it's trying to restore me back in the opposite direction, right? And at some point, I go across the other way, and then once I come on the, this is your right-hand side, right? On, my right, on your right-hand side, I'm being moved back towards the left. And once I get to this left-hand side, I'm being moved back towards the right. Now, do you see what's going on here and how this is related to the equation, the differential equation we've just written down. Look right here. Do you see this? This is what we call a restoring force. Because what it's doing is it's sending you back toward, in this case, the center of motion, right? If your displacement is some positive value towards the right, then the acceleration will be towards the left in the opposite direction. If your displacement is towards the left, then this negative is going to send you back towards the right. That's the way the acceleration will work. So the acceleration always opposes the displacement in terms of the direction, the sign. And that's what locks you in. You can see the further you get away, the more it pushes you back, just like that rubber band was sending me more forcefully back towards the center of motion the further I pulled it. Does that make sense? Now, uh, the last thing that I wanted to show you quickly here, uh, have I showed you? Yeah, no, that's, that's what I wanted. Last thing I need to show you quickly here is the help that you get to uh, remember all this stuff, right? So, reference sheet. Right? Page one, some boring stuff that you don't really need to worry too much about. Page two, it starts to get interesting. Page three, you've spent a whole bunch of time recently, and then you get to that very special page right at the end, right? And then lo and behold, in that final section there, it's even called mechanics, right? Now just have a look, have a look. One, two, three lines right at the bottom there. Okay, what do you notice? Well, the first thing is you've got these two different ways of stating a sinusoidal wave. You can do cos, you can do sine. We're going to look in a minute as to why you might choose one versus the other. And then lastly, you'll notice a teeny little modification, actually, to what differential equation I've written versus the differential equation they've written. Compare what I've got written or what you've got written with what's in here. What's the difference? Yeah, there's this extra constant there, right? Plus c. Now it's um, easy to believe, oh, it's just plus c like any constant of integration, but it's actually not just for constant of integration. It's actually for a center of motion. Think about this, right? If you just start with this vanilla old sine function, right? Let me just go back to that uh, animation from before, okay? The center of motion here is around the origin. Right? It's around zero. You can go up to like one and then down to negative one. Right? But maybe your motion doesn't move around zero. Maybe it actually is much higher or maybe it's much deeper. Right? Uh, if you had like a submarine that was going up and down but underneath like subterranean. Okay? So therefore all I need to do is just introduce a vertical shift into this. Right? But think about what happens as soon as you do the first derivative. What happens to that plus c? 
it's gone, right? Because it's a constant. And then when you do the second derivative, well, that constant was already gone, right? So when you get to this point here, this is no longer the original displacement function, is it? It's the displacement function without that constant, which is the center of motion. So instead of substituting in just x at this point, I'd have to substitute in, oops, sorry, I got rid of it. You'd have to substitute in x minus c, because the c is not there anymore down this line. Does that make sense? So all that you're looking at here is like a more generalized version of this, which is kind of like the classic version of it. Make sense?